What's up guys, David Hoffman here from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful Beirut, Lebanon. Today I'm gonna to take you on an all out eating Lebanese food in Eastern Beirut. Nico, what are we doing today? Oh, we're doing a lot. We're gonna start with some full ant hummus, fava beans and chickpeas. We're gonna do some Lebanese cooking, try some Lebanese cooking that's different from Lebanese meze. We're gonna try some fruit cocktails. We're gonna hit the pub streets. We're gonna see a lot today. Our first stop is this place right here. So Abu Hassan. Yeah, Abu Hassan, the king of fava beans. The king? Yeah, he's the king. All right, let's go inside. Hello, so, how, are how you doing, how you doing? Oh, what's up, man? David, pleasure, nice to meet you. Right there is the fava beans. It's like a mash, right? Yeah. Yeah, like a stew right there. Mixed with some cumin. Nice. Ooh, it's super hot. Yeah, and they come in with the oil. Oh, wow. And some lemon. This is the fava beans. So always, you know, onion, tomato, and some mint. And some pickled, uh, mm. pickles and pickled beets. Oh, this is my favorite right here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, pepperoncini, spicy. This is fatty. They start with, they put some bread, this is some salt, some chickpeas. It's amazing. And then local yogurt. Oh, nice. And He's gonna add some oily, oily stuff. He's frying uh, some butter, with some nuts, and he adds them on top of the fatty. You get perfect fatty. This dish is called msabha. It's a variation of hummus. They add the, the chickpea paste, hummus, salt, garlic. So salt, garlic, and hummus, right? Lime juice, perfect. And and some hummus paste. Look at that. I've never seen this before. And a bit of chickpeas. Wow. This guy's making like some eggs. Sujuk eggs. Mm, scrambled eggs with sujuk, some spicy sausage. I need to try some of these nuts, man. Yeah, that's great. Oh, Alright, guys, let's go eat. Right. Nico, what do we got? We also got here some local bread. This is usually served in restaurants uh, with the meze or with the with breakfast. So they come a bit more fluffier than the typical Lebanese pita bread with more fitting space. So you can just grab anything, right? Yep. Um, sabha is uh, hummus paste with chickpeas, cumin, uh, lime juice, olive oil, and garlic. Fatte is chickpeas with bread and, go and yogurt and some nuts and fat. And here you have fava beans and a bit of chickpeas with oil and lime juice, which is called ful. Guys, right, so we get some bread, right? I love it, it's nice and fluffy. Ready. Onions ready. Okay, so get onions too. Yeah, yeah, All right. So put a piece of onion inside. Yep. And this one again is the chickpeas the, with... The fava beans, the traditional food. Traditional food. Mmm. Top it off with that chicken. Mmm. I love the bread. So look guys, we have fava beans, we have chickpeas, we have onion. And I love the fluffiness of this bread, right? Oh, so good, man. so good. Mm -hmm. For mm. the fat beer, you eat it with a spoon. Oh, that one with a spoon? Yeah. Get the nuts. Oh, so there's bread in here, there's nuts, there's chickpeas, there's yogurt. And what else? There's a... Uh, bit of dry the spices, ground pepper, cumin. The one with the spoon. Mmm! This is my favorite. Oh my god. That yogurt. Mmm, nice and light, right? You have the chickpeas, you have some bread. I love the yogurt. How fresh it is, right? Mixed with zata, it's perfect, bro. The like herbs, everything here is organic. It's all like farm to table, basically. I love this one. Mm -hmm. The first one was good, but this one's better, for sure. And having the almonds in here as well, it's like beautiful. It reminds me of like an Indian chap. Probably one of my favorite Lebanese dishes right here. Mm. Have some variation. Some restaurants do shrimp at this. This is unreal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably these dishes are influenced by Egyptian. Egyptians? Egyptian. So good. And you could do this, right? In the bread? Yeah. Same thing? Doesn't matter, right? Out of carbs. <laughs> <laughs> bread and bread. So good. Mm -hmm. So this is local bread. They don't make it here. They bring it from somewhere else, right? They make it here. Oh, they make it here. But we 
At home, you buy the things we saw. The bigger pita bread, the bigger and thinner. Mm -hmm. This is served in restaurants usually. This is hot bread. It's served directly hot in restaurants. I mean, it is like a mini pita, but it's just fluffier, thicker, fluffier and good for eating messy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's good for scooping, right? Yeah. And then we still have one more dish to try. And that is basically hummus with chickpeas. You have za'atar. Serve myself. Right here. Nice scoop. Mm -hmm. Nice fresh hummus. Mm. 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 Still hot. Mm. It's amazing. I've had hummus that is uh, served hot. I've tried it in some countries. They serve it hot. I mean, this is a little hot. But yeah, this is a variation of hummus. So it's like chickpeas on chickpea mash. Chickpea mash. Mm -hmm. Chickpeas on chickpeas. Chickpeas inception. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like how dense it is too. Mm -hmm. The best one here is this one. Yeah, the fat is. Fat so that's, that's influenced by Egyptians, you said. All these dishes, yeah. Mmm. That yogurt. Yogurt with za'atar. No, basically wild thyme. Mm. I've still got a lot of food today, but I'm indulging right now. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. This is peperoncini, no? Mmm. Pick one is the. We serve it with falafels. Or the one. breakfast. This one? Yeah. So what is this one? The garanis. It's like um, white beet uh, pickles. White beet pickles? Yeah. You go first for me. Mmm. Yeah. It's hard but it's juicy. Mm -hmm. One last bite. I don't want to overload with chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My favorite one? You already know. This one right here. I'm going to finish it. Mmm. Mmm. The bread. Yeah. The bread. That's the old prices, right? I think around two dollars per dish. What? Right. Two, two point five dollars per dish. So affordable. Pretty really yeah, affordable. Super affordable. This is what I love about You're Lebanon. Take this takeaway. Yeah, take it all. Man. And this. Let's get some of that. Freshen up my breath. Mm -hmm. mm. Dude, I eat this every day. So I go in and scoop. That's why this bread's so good. Just scoop it up. Mm -hmm. Chickpeas on chickpeas on chickpeas. Wow. I'm done. Three dollars. That's like seven, eight dollars. Seven dollars for breakfast. I think it's affordable. Good deal. Bam. My friend, chocolate. Chocolate, chocolate. Chocolate. Food is amazing, man. Food is amazing. Loved it, loved it. I didn't wake up. It's too early. I need a coffee. Coffee, Turkish coffee. <laughs> Lebanese coffee, Lebanese yeah, coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Sehwe, yes, Sehwe. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Chokran, chokran. My, my brother. <laughs> Your brother? Yes. Awesome. Hi. How do you? So you guys are the owners, yes. no? You own it. So this, they're the owners. Yes. Their father is Abu, Abu Hassan. Hassan. Okay, got it, got it. Habibi. Habibi. Habibi, Habibi. Problem right now is that it's like 8.30 in the morning on a Monday. Everybody's half asleep right now. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna keep going. Let's get some coffee. Let's explore. In we're in uh, Burj Hamoud, technically in the eastern suburbs of uh, Beirut. We're gonna now go back into Beirut to Furnish Shebek and Badaro. Badaro is famous. It has a lot of cafes and uh, pubs. So we're gonna hit a cafe, walk around there. So to the right here is Ashafariye. 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 That's where I'm staying. That's like the most central area, right? And then over yes. here to the left is Bashabaro. We're going to Badaro, yes. Badaro, Badaro. Sorry guys, I don't speak the language. It's a little hard. So it's a mix of like Arabic and French here. Obviously the French colonized here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, look at this huge place, right? Huge city, lots of buildings. You have a mix between like low rises, high rises. Over here we have like three story buildings. And over to the right we have like 20 story buildings. Yeah, it's a mixture between uh, some old buildings and some new ones. And it's like commercial, right? So this is all residential, all mixed residential, with commercial. All residential. So this is the neighborhood called Badaro. Yeah, around five years ago, many cafes and pubs start opening. Okay. So it became a busy street. So it's more for like nightlife, for um, having a drink, having coffee. So this is the place day. to go, right now. 
It's one of the streets. So you said this in the 60s, this was like the Switzerland of the East, right? Yeah, mainly central Beirut was like the best place to go to. I love the it. The beaches, I mean, the hotels were amazing. Yeah, I feel like I'm walking in Europe right now, like between the buildings, the weather, it's perfect. January right now. All right, so where's that coffee? There are plenty of cafes. What are you gonna get? Turkish coffee? Uh, oh, the Arabic coffee. All right. Here we go. <laughs> if you are happy in your life, you have it without sugar. If you are sad, you have it with sugar. I, I have it with no sugar, no cream, nothing. And this is Cafe Eunice uh, since 1935. Oh wow, 90 yeah, years. It's an old cafe. Roughly 90 years, almost there. And uh, let's have it. When you finish, we, we, can, uh, we can do some like... Uh, reading? Yeah, reading. I can do some for you. Yeah. I, have, I know a bit. You're a fortune teller? <laughs> yeah, I can, be, I can do anything. <laughs> I'm having no sugar. Let's try it. Mmm. Wow. And this is Arabic coffee, right? So, wh where are the beans from, though? Because they have a, a lot of different beans. They have like Brazil, Honduras, they have Ethiopian. Obviously, Ethiopian is like the birthplace of coffee, right? So, we have the roasteries in Lebanon, but we, we bring beans. Okay, we grow, we of get course. beans from outside. Yeah, like most people. Yeah. Most countries. Mostly right? Brazil and Africa. Okay. Brazil, we get a lot of Brazilian coffee and they roast them here. The uniqueness is first of all roasting, the method of roasting of the beans. It's different from around the world. Second of all, the way we make it, we like boil it mm -hmm. and then we try to break it every 10 seconds. We like break the bubbles. Okay, got so it. So if you, if you know how to make good coffee, you know when to break it and when to stop boiling it. So you get this perfect texture. This is perfect. This is perfect texture, by the way. Good, good job, Cafe Yunus. Dude, cheers, cheers. This is like awesome. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And this is generally when you drink this with your friends, it means it's time for gossip. <laughs> it's gossip. Let's talk about people. We're gossiping here. And no, problems. <laughs> we don't need to talk about anybody. We need to talk about our lives. <laughs> Lebanese, we talk about people. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna look for some images. I can see a, a dragon. A dragon? A dragon means some, something great will happen to you. Something positive and great and powerful will happen to you in the next few weeks. Dragon right there. Dragon, right? So yeah, something good is gonna happen? A dragon. That's all you saw, right? Yeah, dragon means something good will happen. I just see like... When you see a dragon or a beast, it means something good will happen to you. I'm gonna put a dragon on my chest, bro. Ready? Good. Though. Ready to go? Yeah. Yalla, yalla. But where, where's the bill? The receipt said 22 US dollars. There's really one dollar because the rate is different, right? So basically 34, right? There you go. Business Street. Spadaro, full of pubs and hey, the bars. And some cafes. A lot of people come to work and chit chat during the day. We're gonna come back at night one day to see it. Definitely. Yeah, because obviously right now it's like 10 in the morning on a Monday, so most things are closed. So we're just gonna walk around a little bit and then go back to the car and then go hit up another place for cocktails. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the cocktails. Cocktails, cocktails. And right here we have a, a fruit vendor and vegetables. Yeah, I can better be about it. We have the best pomegranate in Lebanon. Also add pomegranate okay. molasses to all our Lebanese meza. Mmm. Chicken liver with pomegranate molasses. Chicken liver with pomegranate? Yeah, the psoremen, man. You do this into molasses and you add it to the Lebanese dishes. Wow. Mm. So we got here potatoes, Got some onions, tomatoes, pomegranate, that's it. Yeah, and they're they're always generous to give you some. You wanna try yeah, of course. Everybody here is so friendly. Chokran. Chokran, thank you. Thank Too kind. He's like, take some, take some. He didn't even yeah. accept any tip or anything. Yeah, I'll take a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So fresh, so good. Mm hmm. I love how they just burst in your mouth, huh? You need the vitamins. It's like gushers, you know? Yeah. Explode. We're in next to Badaro and Furnish Bek, another part of Beirut. We're gonna go and have some Lebanese fruit cocktails with the cream and all of that. For a 10 minute drive, we're here in what area? This is Dauro. Dauro. We're gonna have a fruit cocktail here. Okay. And it's a heavily populated area. Yeah, a lot of people, lots of cars. Yeah, lots of vendors. I mean, it's just like traffic, traffic, traffic. I mean, it was pretty bad. I mean, it's right here, but the traffic was intense. Yeah. A lot of expats here as well from Bangladesh, 
from Philippines, they live here. Big community, Ethiopians, Sri Lankans, they mostly live here. We're gonna go here to Jabur cocktail. Jabur. Hello, how are you doing? Here it's typical like fruit cocktails. You either add avocado juice with it or strawberry and uh, banana juice. Okay. And they top it with ashta cream, honey, and some fruits on top. So it's it's more like a smoothie. This is like more like an American smoothie, right? So they add just some fruits on top. So this one has some kiwi, some strawberries, cream, and sugar syrup. I'm going with avocado. I'm going with a super green cocktail. Uh, so the banana, right? Got the peel. So banana on the bottom. Nice. So he's adding some kiwi, right? So this is really a cocktail. The other one was a smoothie. Yeah. Add some fruits. He goes in with the juices. Like that's the green. Avocado. Mmm, avocado. Nice. So he's gonna mix it up, right? A bit just to, so the juice goes in the fruits. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag clean. Yeah, it's some sort of some honey. Okay, perfect honey. I love it. And is it out of kiwi on top? So some strawberries. So run. Fifty? Yeah. So fifty is like two dollars for this. Wow. Great deal. My yes. friend, thank you so much. Here you go. Alright, let me try this incredible cocktail. Chocolate, chocolate. Strop the strawberry juice at the bottom. Mm. From the up you go in with the ashta and avocado. Oh wow. Love it man. Yeah, so it's a super pure like shake, right? Like yeah. no sugar added. Mmm. So good. And now I'm gonna get some of the cream. So what is that? Like a whipping cream. Ashta is like more it's made from it's good, right? <laughs> it's crazy. It is whipped cream. So it's curd. Mmm. Nice and fluffy, nice and fresh. Oh the mix with avocado. Yeah. Mmm. So healthy. Typical healthy Lebanese desserts. A lot of cocktail places like this? Yeah. Spread around. Wow. That was here in Lebanon and they made them freshly. Mm -hmm. They mix the avocados, a bit of banana and milk mm -hmm. and honey. And you get this avocado juice. I love the curd. Mm -hmm. Nice combination. And the ashta is like mm. on top. It's like the cherry on top. And the ashta on top. And the avocado feels like. So it's not like a shake, it's more like a puree. Yeah. More like an avocado. We call it juice, but it's more of like a mm -hmm. like an avocado smoothie. Mm. Strawberries, avocado, kiwi, and the curd. This is bomb, bomba. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love it. <laughs> Plus melon. Mmm. My man, amazing. Two dollars fifty. <laughs> I'm not leaving this. Not one fruit. Mm. Keith, how's the ashta and the avocado? Okay, good? So good. Mm. Jabur, plenty of uh, fruit shops here in Daura. Shawarma and fruit shops. Like, you have one shawarma, one fruit shop around Daura, Amazing. around about. We're busy with having this whole strip, right? Yeah, it's cocktails, shawarma, cocktail, cocktail shawarma. Cocktail, shawarma, cocktail, shawarma. Chokran, chokran. Take care. All right, let's go. Now I'm awake. I feel better. Cocktail woke me up. Let's go. <laughs> we're going to Independence Square, and then from there we're gonna go eat some cooking, some Lebanese cooking. A little different from the menze. Yeah, it's totally different. This is we're gonna try the food that we do at home every day. We call them cooking, Lebanese cooking. I'm just just translating from Arabic. Tabakh. After a five-minute drive, we're entering the heart of Beirut. This is where Independence Square is. There's a beautiful mosque, a lot of incredible buildings. Yep. Let's get off. Man, this is this shows here a bit of a story of Beirut. You have the Roman era. You can see it through the Roman aqueducts. You have the old Lebanese houses down below. So Beirut is like it got re reconstructed seven times. One time an earthquake uh, knocked it. One time a fire, big fire. Sometimes the war. So. It's like a phoenix, Beirut is like a phoenix. It always gets reconstructed. Here we have the symbol of independence in the Independence Square right next to me. 
the Independence Square was the biggest hub in the 60s where everything, all the commerce used to happen here. The port was here next to us, the big cinemas were here. So this is like a historical place. We're gonna walk around it. Pretty awesome, you can just walk around all these stones, right? These are ancient, massive stones from the Roman era. So if you guys don't know, you know, Lebanon was, what? Roman, Byzantine, Ottoman, Persians were here, Phoenicians were here. Phoenician, the, port, the Phoenician famous port was right over there. Right there. The biggest port in the world at the time, yeah. Phoenicians, wow. Right behind us. Independence Square was the center of Lebanon in the 60s. Now, as you can see, parking lot, buildings. Over here we have a mosque, behind here we have a church. And then right over here, we're going that way, right? What's over there? We're going to Saifi village. Uh, it's a new village uh, made with uh, European architecture. Beautiful to walk around, colorful. We'll have a nice walk. There is European influence, right? Yeah, fr some French architects influenced uh, the design of Saifi village and uh, of course the Jemaisi street. It's mainly this is like 40s, 50s France. This sort of balconies, small balconies. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. It's like France. I love the colors, right? So you have a mix of like red, blue, pink, you know, orange, and you have a flag obviously Lebanon all over the place. And here we have a small courtyard. Nice square. Very nice. Yeah, we crossed uh, from Saifi village, now we're in Jemaisi. So basically, the train used to pass here. We have a lot of stairs on our right because people from Ashafi used to go down the stairs, meet the, uh, meet the train. We used to have a lot of silk factories here and a lot of Jemaisi trees. So that's why it's called Jemaisi. And now it's more of a street with restaurants and pubs and nice architecture, nice French influenced architecture all around. Very historical street, as you can see, beautiful building. Some of them are being renovated right now. But I love the colors in the balconies that are very significant to the area, right? These yeah. balconies. Nice. So the restaurant we're going to is down this way. Yeah. Welcome to Lebanon! Welcome! <laughs> Habibu! So we made it here to the restaurant, it's called Welcome, Le Chef, I love it. So the chef was actually um, funded or survived because Russell Crowe donated money, right? Le Chef, you welcome to Lebanon! Welcome! So after the Beirut blast, this place got destroyed and they opened a GoFundMe page to raise funds to renovate it and he paid it in one go, just the next day. Thank you Russell Crowe. <laughs> now we're here, let's go inside and see. We can, see, we can see him in, uh, in July, in the new Thor. It's a vintage place. Welcome! Pumpkin! Yes! Oh wow. We're gonna try some Lebanese cooking that we do at our homes in Lebanon. We're gonna have a few ones and I'll explain about them. And David will try them to see what we eat every day. We don't eat pizza or tabbouleh every day. We eat cooking. We have the menu right here, so it's eggplants, pickles, yeah, all have the, These are the cooking that they are making. Mm -hmm. and these are the, the like everyday menu, like the mezas and the cooking. We're gonna try the cooking. And then we got some pepper, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Red green pepper, olives, horseradish, mm -hmm. and we also have some pita. Alright guys, we're gonna go into the kitchen and see what they're cooking up. Wow, look at this. That looks amazing. So here with kibe, which are like small meat pies. Like, it's not meat pies, it's like meat stuff and meat. Meat, like fritters that are fried, right? And then you have the lamb rice. Here, I guess it's more lamb. lamb for the White rice. And we have a few different things, like gravies here too. And this looks great. Wow. Hello, hello, David. Pleasure. Everything is okay. Everything is great. Under control. Under control. Your shop here. I'm ready to eat. Meat. Lamb meat, of course. Lentil. Rice with tomato soup also. Ah. Oh, wow. With meat. Bull. With kibbe. Yeah. Kibbe. Kibbe. That's kibbe. 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 Lasagna. Lasagna. Lasagna italiano. I'm trying a little bit of everything. We're trying everything. Tutto, tutto. Lebanese cooking. We basically start with some diced onions and garlic. We fry them. And then we add the sauces. Here, we, for example, this sauce. We add some tomato to the garlic and onions. Here we add eggplants and a bit of chickpeas. This is also this is done by mashing, frying them, garlic onions, then mashing rice and lentils into a sort of puree. Call them jadra, lubie or green peas, moussaka, moussaka, like moussaka, and kibbe with laban or kibbe with yogurt. Some fried uh, meatballs. So green beans with like a nice tomato gravy. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Nice and chunky. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, I love the gravy. Nice and light. Yeah. 
Mm. Mm. So healthy, man. Mm, I love it. And they're very big, though. Huge. And then over here, you grab the pita, right? Just like that. Break off a piece. Chedra. So it's basically lentils and rice, right? Yeah. Like a puree of lentils and rice. And rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Cold. Love the grains. And this is, you said it's like moussaka, but obviously yeah. those different moussaka is a Greek dish. Mm. But this one, so it's eggplant with chickpeas, right? And then you also have and some onions, fried onions. And fried onions too. Oh, I love eggplants, guys. I love it. Mm -hmm. Nice and roasty. Mm. Let's eat. Mm. So soft. Mm. Oh my god, amazing. Amazing. Oh, again, super light. Light tomato gravy, mm, but the eggplant man, the chickpeas, make it like some crunch. Mm -hmm. It's cold. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so healthy. Dude, I can eat this all day. <laughs> mm -hmm. You also have a nice crunch with the onions too. Camera's onions. Super healthy everything, but you know what? Let me jump over here because I know this is gonna be the start for me. I haven't had this at all in Lebanon yet. First time. First time I'm trying kibe with yogurt. Oh, look at that. Oh man, it's like hollow. Beautiful. So you see it's minced meat, some, some bulgur, right? Some bulgur. Bul That's how you say it, right? And some yogurt right there. Mm. Oh man, lightly fried. Oh, dude, I love the minced meat. And this is lamb, right? Or is it beef? Lamb. Yeah. lamb. Oh, I love it with the yogurt. Mm-hmm. Mm. Add some of that. Some rice. I love this dish. Mm. Yeah. My favorite is with the shakar and yeah. green. And the greens? I like the, I like the vegan dishes. Yeah, the vegan dishes are great. And this is, so this is like a baked eggplant, roasted eggplant, and then it's fried, right? Mmm. I like that it's cold. Mm -hmm. Nice and refreshing. Yeah. Nice with the onions too. Look at that. Beautiful onions. Mm -hmm. mm. I love this restaurant. Everything's so fresh. Mm. What I like is that everything's like cold dishes. All cold dishes. You can serve them. Actually, all of these you can serve them either cold or oh, hot. Wow. The food's amazing, but really it's about the experience, right? You come in, he's welcoming you, like going to Lebanon, very tight tables, everybody's like looking at everybody else's food. Oh, homey food, right? I'm full, my man. We had a great day. Thank you. Okay. Turmeric pudding with the flowers of the orange blossom, homemade. Okay. This merli. When baby is born, we make this kind of dessert at home and we celebrate. It's made of rice powder of the babies, cinnamon, caraway, anise, roses, water. Yeah, because it reminds me of like a tiramisu. This, no milk inside, opposite than the other. Yeah. yeah? Mostly all the desserts are with milk. This is the only one without milk. No milk in this dessert. Mmm. Yeah. It looks like chocolate, not chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another very like fluffy. Mmm. Oh wow. So healthy. Nice and crunchy with the nuts. You get some of this. Mm-hmm. Never tried it before. So unique. Different. I never had this. And it's really cold. Wow. This is rice pudding with orange blossom. Oh wow. Look at that. Mmm. Mm. Thick, cold, love the orange. Mm -hmm. mm. The red thing is the orange blossom. Yeah, yeah. It's going through. And it feels like a, almost like paracotta. It's one of my favorite desserts in Italy. Oh my gosh. Mm. The jelly, the orange blossom, what a unique twist to it, huh? Mm -hmm. Get that orange blossom, almost like syrup, right? Mm -hmm. Anjo, manjo, manjo, tutto. Mm. This one's good. Mm -hmm. mm. The orange blossom, they do it well. The orange blossom is amazing. The whole thing is ten dollars. The plates are between one to two dollars, and the dessert around three dollars. 
so the whole thing ten dollars. So, so good. Welcome. Yeah, I'm happy when I see you. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Now you guys know you have to come to Le Chef. Le yes. Chef. Le Chef. Yes. Where you're from. Thank you, thank you. Oh man, I am full. My man, thank you so much. Habibi, welcome to Lebanon. Nice to meet thank you. Thank you, Habibi, Habibi. That, that means brother, right? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Family. Alright. Family. That's it, my friends. That is the morning here in Beirut. Wow, what a tour we started off at. Oh. Abu Hassan, king of fava beans. The king of fava beans. Incredible food from there. We drove, we got a coffee. Then we went, we had our fruit cocktail. Then we explored Independence Square. We walked through this little European neighborhood. And finally we made it here to Le Chef. And that was amazing. Food was so good, so real, you know? From Lebanese traditional cooking and desserts. <laughs> exactly. And if you're vegan, you can eat there as well. Like yeah, most well, of our vegan dishes. Well, most of our, of our dishes are vegan. Uh, and now we're gonna digest for a little while <laughs> and relax. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, just give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. We'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Beirut, Lebanon. Peace. Ooh, let's go. <laughs> my belly's full. <laughs> <laughs>